Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core, and this here is my Nintendo DS. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of wear and tear over the years. In fact, this thing is almost 20 years old at this point. But even then, I love breaking it out from time to time to play my favorite Nintendo DS or Game Boy Advance games. And while I enjoy playing DS games on original hardware, they're also a lot of fun to play on the 3DS too. And so in this video here, I'm going to show you how to play every Nintendo DS game on a 3DS, and I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks along the way. So if you've already been playing DS games on your 3DS, there might be something new to learn right here. Now to unlock the full potential of playing DS games on a 3DS, you're going to want to have a modded console. And that's because we're going to be using apps like Twilight Menu here to actually accomplish this task. And I've already made a video about how to mod your 3DS, and so this is a continuation of that original idea. Either way, I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to get DS games playing on a 3DS. And once you have it set up, it's going to be a lot of fun. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, before we get started, I do want to talk a little bit about the experience of playing DS games on a 3DS. To start, I want to talk about the image quality. The original Nintendo DS had a resolution of 256 by 192 and it'll be the same resolution on both of the DS screens, and they have a 4x3 aspect ratio. Now, the 3DS screens have two different aspect ratios, but if you're showing just 4x3 content, then the resolution is going to be 324 by 240 on each screen. And so the resolution is higher on a 3DS, but it's not higher by an integer scale. What this means is you're not going to have perfectly balanced pixels when you scale up from the Nintendo DS to the 3DS. Now essentially you could do this by not scaling the image at all, and so it's going to have a very small screen on the larger 3DS. But personally I think it's worth it to actually blow it up to full screen like you're seeing here. And all of these apps will be doing this by default. However, when comparing the two, let's start with the Nintendo DS Lite right here, you can see that the text is very nice and sharp and balanced. Meanwhile, on the 3DS, it looks like they're using a bilinear filter in the upscale. And so because of that, the image is just going to look a little bit softer overall. And honestly, the only time I really even notice this difference is when I'm comparing them side by side. After all, we're not talking about a very high resolution display in the first place. Either way, I wanted to put this out there that there are a couple compromises when it comes to playing Nintendo DS games on the 3DS. However, I think there's a lot of other positives that come with it too. Number one, depending on the 3DS you're using, you will have a larger display and it's going to look really nice. And because these screens are more modern, you're going to have a better contrast ratio and saturation as well. And of course, there's a lot of other things you can do on a 3DS that you can't on a DS, like playing 3DS games. And so overall, I think this is a net improvement from playing games on the original hardware. Another thing to note is you don't have to actually mod a 3DS to be able to play all the DS games. For example, you could get one of these two cartridges right here, and you can find these on AliExpress and eBay as well. And each of these cards have an SD card slot where you can load it up with your favorite Nintendo DS ROMs and then play it directly on the device. So let me give you a quick example of how each of these work. We'll start with the R4 card. All you have to do is just put the cartridge inside. It's going to think it's some other DS game and you can load it right up. From there, it'll take you to this menu. You just go into the game section and you can navigate through your games and then load them up from here. And really, that's all there is to this process. And so as you can imagine, this is a pretty easy solution if you don't want to mod your 3DS. And I'm not really sure what the hotkeys are to exit out of a game. All I do is I just mash on the shoulder and face buttons and it always brings me back to the main menu. Either way, yes, this is how the R4 card works. Now this other one is called like the 208 in one or something else like that. And it's essentially the exact same process. So you'd add the cart to the slot here and then it'll pop up as being a DS game. For me, it's a SpongeBob game. From there, when you open up that game, it's gonna bring you to this menu right here. And I should note that these have the ability to play old school game ROMs, but I wouldn't recommend playing them on this. Instead. I'm working on a guide to play retro games on a 3DS, and so that'll be out soon. Either way, same process here. We can go into the DS menu and then pick our game and then launch it from here. And as the name implies, this one comes preloaded with 208 different games. But if your favorite ROMs aren't on there, you can always add your own. And to exit out of a game, same process. Just mash on all the buttons and it'll take you back to the menu. And so those are the options if you don't want to jailbreak your 3DS. But for the rest of the video, I'm going to assume that you've already modded your device. As I mentioned in my video, I recommend going through the written guide more than anything, and I'll leave a link to my website in the video description which will have all the pertinent links that you need. So if you haven't already hacked your 3DS, go ahead and do that first and then come back here. Don't worry, I'll wait for you. And so now, assuming you've gone through that website to hack your DS, you should have the Universal Updater app on your home screen. And this is basically an app store, so let's go ahead and open this one up. And once you're in the main menu, you want to find the app right here called Twilight Menu Plus Plus. Once you've highlighted that app, go and press the A button, and that'll give you a couple options when it comes to downloading the app. 
and we're just going to do the top one right here. After that, it'll take a minute or two to download the app. You can just kind of kick back and let it do its thing. And once that's done, you can close out of the app and you should get a notification that you have a new app on your home screen. And surprise, surprise, it is Twilight Menu Plus Plus. So let's go ahead and open up our app right here. On the first screen here, you can choose your language. I'm just going to stick with the system language, which is English. And then once you press A, it's going to ask you to pick your region. I'm going to go with USA. After that, it's going to give you the Nintendo DSi logo. Just go ahead and tap on the touch screen. And then you'll get the Twilight Menu logo. You can tap on this one too. And when you open up that first time, it will prepare some files like the music as you see here. So it might take a little bit longer to launch that first time. From there, it'll take you into a file browser where it expects you to find your Nintendo DS ROM. But of course, we haven't loaded up any of our games yet, so let's do that next. We're going to close out of the app and then also turn off the Nintendo 3DS. From there, I'm going to extract my SD card and put it into my computer. Now here on my computer, I have two different windows open. The one on the left is my ROM library, so that has all my Nintendo DS games right here. And then the window on the right is my root directory of my SD card. And if you look, I already have a folder named ROMs. I'm not sure if that was created by actually opening up Twilight Menu or some other app I was playing around with, but if you don't already have a place to put your Nintendo Nintendo DS ROMs, you can just go ahead and make a folder right here. For me, I'm just going to use the one that was already pre-made. I'm going to open it up here and you can see there is an NDS folder. And so that's where I'm going to place all of my ROMs. Now it doesn't really matter how many games you put on here. You can put 1, 20, or 100. It really doesn't matter. And for this example, I'm just going to move over about 40 of them altogether. Now, if you don't have a bunch of Nintendo DS ROMs, but you have your original cartridges, we can use those too. And so let me show you real quick how to set up that process. We're going to use Mario Kart DS here as an example. And again, we're going to need to have a modded 3DS to do this process. To get started, go ahead and put the DS game into your 3DS, and then hold on the Start button while pressing the Power button. That's going to bring you into an app called God Mode 9. And once you're inside, you want to scroll down to the eighth line, which is called Game Cart. And once you're there, go ahead and press the A button. This will bring up a menu of all the different files that are inside the cartridge. And the one we're most interested in right now is the one that says NDS. It's the top one here. So go ahead and press the A button. You should see the name of your game up top. And then down below, you have a bunch of different menu options. And some of these can get really complicated. All we have to do right here is just go to the bottom one. It says copy to 0 slash GM9 slash out. And once you're there, just go ahead and press the A button and it's going to grab that file and then move it onto your SD card. And this usually takes about less than a minute altogether per game. And once you've got a confirmation that everything's moved over, go ahead and press the A button to continue. And then we can turn off our 3DS. To do that, we can hold on to the R button and then press the Start button. And once the DS is off, we can take out our SD card and put it back into our computer. Now when we get to the root directory of our SD card, we're going to go into the GM9 folder right here, and then the subfolder named out, and within that we will find our Mario Kart DS game. All you have to do at this point is just rename it to whatever you'd like, and we are good to go. So I'm going to rename this to Mario Kart DS, and then I'm going to navigate over to my ROMs and NDS folder, and then I will move that file over here. And that's it, we have now successfully installed a Nintendo DS game from our cartridge to the SD card. Now back in God Mode 9, you might remember that there were a bunch of different files besides the NDS one listed. And one of these is actually your save game file. So you can actually do the same process but with that .sav file right here. And that'll do the same thing. It's going to output it to that same folder. And then to move it over to your SD card, you would go back into your same ROMs folder. And then you should have a folder named saves in all lowercase. All you have to do is just move that SAV file over there. And as long as your NDS and SAV file have the same name, it should find that save game for you. So this is going to be really handy if you have a save game on your cartridge that you want to move over to your 3DS. Either way, once you have loaded up your SD card with a bunch of NDS files, we're ready to actually start playing. And to do this, we're going to go back into that Twilight Menu app. And I should note here that it takes about 25-30 seconds to load up this app every single time. So it's not going to be an instant process in case you were expecting that. Either way, once you get to this navigation menu right here, all you have to do is just find wherever you put all of those NDS files. So I'm going to navigate over to ROMs, and then I'll bring me into the subfolders, then I'll go into the NDS folder. From there, you can see a listing of all of your games with these nice little thumbnails too. And as you might expect, to start up this game is very easy, all you have to do is just tap on the game right here. And also, it's going to take a little bit longer to boot up every Nintendo DS game on that very first time. And that's because it's making a bunch of files in the background. 
Either way, after a moment, you will see the NDS Bootstrap logo right here, and then your Nintendo DS game should boot right up. And really, in the most basic terms, this is how you would play Nintendo DS games on your 3DS. It's really just a matter of installing Twilight Menu and then loading up your games onto the SD card and then booting them from there. Now, a couple things to note, if you put more than 40 Nintendo DS games onto your SD card, it's not going to show them all in one menu. Instead, you'll have to tab over by using the shoulder buttons to get between the different pages of 40 games. And they'll all be listed in alphabetical order, so it's pretty easy to navigate through. Now, say that you're done playing a game. You have two different options at this point. The first one would be just to press the home button and close out of the whole app altogether, and that'll bring you back to the main 3DS menu. But let's say that you want to swap between one Nintendo DS game to another. And to do that, you need to get into the menu, which requires a special hotkey. What you want to do is press the L shoulder button, then down on the D-pad, and then select. And that'll bring up this menu right here, which will do things like reset the game, or if you go down to the bottom, you can quit the game altogether. Now, this will also take about 20-25 seconds to to boot back into the menu, but after that's done you can go directly into your next DS game from there. Okay, and finally I'm going to show you how to add Nintendo DS games directly onto the home menu of your 3DS. And to do this we need to go back into the Universal Updater app that we went into earlier. Now once you're inside you want to find the app that looks like a narwhal, and this one is called the NDS Forwarder. And same thing here, we just need to install this app. So you can press the A button, and then under Available Downloads you only have one option, and from there you can confirm the download. This one will take a minute to download and install, but after that you can go ahead and close out of the Universal Updater app. Now back into the home screen, you want to go into the Homebrew Launcher. And that's because the NDS Forwarder is not going to show up in the home menu, but within here. Generally you're going to find this at the bottom of your menu, so just go ahead and scroll down all the way. And here it is right here, the NDS Forwarder Generator. Go ahead and tap on that to bring it up. Now the first option is going to say install all NDS. This actually doesn't work properly, so I would not recommend trying this. Instead, we're going to install them one by one using the file explorer. And so same process here, we need to go into our ROMs folder, and then again into our NDS folder, and here are all of our games. And installing these is super easy. All you have to do is just pick your game, press A, and then follow the prompts. However, before you start installing every single game that you own, using this method you're going to be limited to only 40 games in the home menu. So really, I would recommend using this for just your very favorite Nintendo DS games. So for my choice in this example, I'm going to pick this game right here called Zookeeper. This is a game I've loved since back in the day. In fact, it's probably one of my most played Nintendo DS games of all time. So I think this one is very much so worthy of putting on my 3DS home screen. So go ahead and press the A button to confirm that you want to install it, and then it'll say installation complete. From there, you can back out of the app, and then once you get into the home menu, it'll say that new software has been added. So let's go ahead and check out our present, and surprise, surprise, it is Zookeeper. And here we go. All you have to do is just tap on the icon right here, and it'll boot directly into the game. And it's still going to take a while to boot up each of these games. It's really just bypassing that Twilight menu navigation part. And so I would still expect it to take about 25 seconds altogether. But after that, here we are. We're in Zookeeper for the Nintendo DS. And if you haven't tried out this game before, I would totally recommend it. At a very surface level, this is basically a match three game. But there are two components that I really like about it. The first one here is a quota system. If you look at the top screen, it shows you all the different animals that you can match. And then it gives you a quota number. And so you have to match all these animals to reach that quota or higher. And once all of your animals have met the quota, you can move on to the next level. And as you level up, it's going to give you a higher quota, and so it gets harder and harder as you go. On top of that, this game has a very loose gravitational system, which means that as the tiles are falling down, you can move other ones as it's going. And so if you get really fast at this game, you can build up a bunch of combos to get really high scores. And so back in the day, my wife and I used to compete with this game and see who could get the highest score. And of course, she was way better than me, but all the same, it was a fun challenge. So yes, if you're looking for for a kind of simple puzzle game that gets really hectic at the end, then I would recommend Zookeeper. It's a lot of fun. Now let's say you want to have more than 40 Nintendo DS games on your home screen. Well, there is a method to that, but it's a little bit more advanced. And so instead, I'm just going to leave a link to this in my written guide so you can follow it yourself. It's really not that complicated, you just have to install some apps on a computer and then go through the process from there. So it's a little bit more involved, but if you do want to have lots of DS games on your home screen, this is what I would recommend. Now personally, I enjoy having the limitation of only 40 Nintendo DS games on my home screen, because that means I'm going to keep a more trimmed collection of my very favorite games. Either way, the options are there, and I'll have that linked in my written guide. 
And really, that's about it when it comes to playing DS games on the Nintendo 3DS. When I first got started with this guide, I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated, but it turns out it's pretty easy. But all the same, I bet there are a bunch of different tips and tricks that I missed in my research. And so if you have any other tips, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. In the end, I still really love playing Nintendo DS games on original hardware, but it's also really nice to have all these games embedded into my 3DS experience as well. And there's still a lot more potential to unlock from the 3DS. I have a couple more video ideas on the way. Number one, I'm going to show you how to play retro games in my next video. I might just focus on the Game Boy Advance first and then move on to the other systems from there. And I also picked up a Japanese 3DS recently and so I'm going to go through the jailbreak process again and see what differences there are when you buy something out of region. And I plan on filming that process and so be on the lookout for that video too. As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!